Hello, friends. Welcome back. Dr. Ken Berry, family physician here with you. For the next hour, I'm going to be answering questions directly from you. Um, if, if you think, why would I listen to this? Well, because very often you've normalized something in your life and you don't even realize it's a problem anymore. <clears throat> but then when you hear someone else ask a question, you're like, oh yeah, I have that too. I forgot about that. So even if you don't want to watch this, just listen to it like a podcast. Put it on and just do what you're doing and listen to it in the background because you might be surprised that you've normalized some stuff. You just think it's normal. now. You didn't think that was a problem, uh, pathology. So uh, hang out with me and let's talk about a proper human diet and all the things it can fix. Here's Coach Marsha, one of our coaches in our private group. Good to see you, Marsha. Is my audio okay? Tell me in the comments. Can you guys all hear me good? I'm trying a little different audio thing here, and I don't know <clears throat> if it's working that great or not. All right. Let's see if I can find a question here. I don't think I have any announcements. <clears throat> Hey, that's a good idea, Walter. Everybody hit that thumbs up right now. Hit the heart before you forget. There's Coach Mitzi, one of our other audio spine. Okay, thank you, Coach Mitzi. We have several of our coaches in the comments. They have a blue wrench beside their name. So if someone answers your question in the comments and they have a blue wrench beside their name, then that means the answer came straight from me because they've all been working with me for years. They know exactly how I'm going to answer questions. <clears throat> all right, let's see what's going on here. Audio's good. Okay, very good, very good, very good. Now, if any of you guys are in the private group, uh, don't let your questions get lost here in the in the thousands of people asking questions. Wait till 6 p.m. because we'll be doing a live inside the private group at 6 p.m. Audio good. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, we got somebody watching from Denmark. Hello, Denmark. We want to come visit you soon. Have a proper human diet event. There's Western Australia. Where are you guys watching from in the world? What city, what state, what country? Where are you at? Uh, Lisa says, how is it How is it we can eat OMAD one meal a day? How does the body do with all those calories at once? So many animals on the planet, Lisa, eat once a day. Or some animals once every third or fourth day. This is perfectly consistent with the principles of biology with regards to digestion. Uh, human beings are absolutely capable of this. <clears throat> we have multiple examples uh, in the anthropological literature of, of hunter-gatherers who would eat once a day or every other day, uh, wouldn't eat for days while they were hunting. Uh, then they would eat, and they would eat as much as they could possibly hold. And so I know that growing up, you and I, Lisa, we were all taught you need to eat three meals a day. And then later, you need to eat three meals a day with snacks in between because if you don't eat something every two hours, you'll lose all your energy. You won't have any energy. This is complete foolishness. This is not based on any biological principle. So, Lisa, your body is made to eat one large meal a day and grab all of the vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and fatty acids that it needs out of that meal. Now, that's not to say you should eat one meal a day, but you absolutely can. <clears throat> uh, any of you guys who don't believe that, if you came to my farm here, farm, and I locked you in my barn, and I just fed you one giant meal a day, you might be mad at me for being locked in the barn, but you would be fine. You'd probably actually lose some unwanted fat, and your fasting insulin would come down, and your A1C would come down, and your blood sugar would come down, and your markers of inflammation would come down because I'm just going to feed you one meal a day, a proper human diet. And so in three months, six months, when I let you out of my barn, not only would you run to the sheriff and have me arrested, 
but you would be able to run much faster to the sheriff and you'd be much more mentally clear, clear when you were describing to the sheriff what Dr. Berry had done to you. There's nothing abnormal, unusual, unnatural, or dangerous about eating one meal a day. Okay, There are many people in our private group who eat one meal every other day, and it's a big meal. And they have specific reasons for doing that. <clears throat> Good question. Uh, missed the question. Uh, Johnny said, been doing OMAD for four years, lost 80 pounds in the first 12 months. I'm now uh, implementing carnivore for better health. Absolutely. <clears throat> Yvonne, can chronic kidney disease stage three be what on a carnivore diet? Be worsened? Absolutely not. Uh, be managed? Not really. Be improved? Yes. If that was your question, Yvonne, yes. We've had so many people in our community who started out with stage three uh, chronic kidney disease, some stage three B. And now they either have normal kidney function or they have stage one. They've, they've improved all the way back to stage one. How many of you guys are saving money by buying larger cuts of meat or larger amounts? When you see 10 pounds of ground beef on sale, you go and buy that and break it up into one or two pound sections and put it in the freezer. Uh, money's getting tight these days. Uh, the world is changing. I just talked about this on my latest video on my farm channel. Did you know I had a farm channel? Yeah, it's OB Farms, the letter O and the letter B, Oxford Berry Farms. And I just talked about how the world's changing. So you might want to check that video out on my farm channel. Uh, but the events of the last three, three and a half years have changed the world. And I don't think it's ever going back. To the way it was and for many people this is this is this these these crazy events have literally fractured their belief system their belief structure has been fractured like you dropped it from a height and it landed on something really hard uh all of our life we thought the world worked a certain way we thought we could trust these authorities we thought that these people on television would never lie to us and now we're left with this. So welcome to 2024. Do you have a fractured belief structure? If so, realize that when that happens, the thing that you do is you revert back to common sense. You don't have to have a PhD in anything, but you can always apply the common sense filter to anything that you read or hear or see. Jeff says, will you lose muscle if you're eating one meal a day? Not if you're lifting weights, Jeff. Uh, the way you build muscle is to lift weights. Now, we've had uh, many people who are severely obese adopt a one meal a day. And in that one meal, you eat as much as you can hold. You eat until you're comfortably stuffed. Lots of protein and lots of fat. Now, if you're eating a high carb one meal a day, 100% you could lose some muscle. If you're eating a high carb one meal a day and injecting Ozempic or Wigobi or Manjaro, 100% you'd lose a ton of muscle. Yes. But if, you're, if your one meal a day is fat and protein, the two things that all of your muscles and connective tissues and bones are made of, no, there's no reason for you to lose muscle as long as you stay active. And then if you want to build muscle, you do that same thing and you lift weights. Now, again, not everybody needs to be one meal a day. Some people do great on two meals a day. A very small percentage of people in our community eat three meals a day for a specific reason. But the vast majority of people, one meal a day or two meals a day is the way for you. Okay. Now, the big food manufacturers don't want you to do that. Kellogg's does not want you to eat one big meal a day because they know that if you're going to eat one meal a day, it's going to have to be nutrient dense food. Otherwise, you'll be hungry again in two hours. And so you could eat an entire box of Raisin Bran. It's got the Heart Healthy logo. And then the entire box with skim milk, of course. You'd be hungry again in three or four hours. No way you could eat one meal a day doing that. But if you eat enough animal fat and animal protein, your body's made to allow you and to actually benefit from eating one meal a day. Yeah.
John Payne is a good example of the chronic kidney disease. He's got stage four CKD. Been doing the proper human diet for several months. Uh, creatinine levels are still high, but have come down and have stabilized. Any other advice? So I'll bet you at this point, John's back to a stage 3B. Um, and then as he continues to eat a strict proper human diet, John, you need to have, take a daily dose of vitamin P. Patience. It took you decades to muck up your kidneys with that high carb diet and whatever else you were doing that mucked them up. It's going to take many months for, for your kidneys to return closer to normal. They may not go back to completely normal kidney function, but they're damn sure going to go back to at least stage two. So stay tuned, stay focused, stay strict, and give your kidneys time to heal. <laughs> Paul Beter says, where's the sign up for the barn? I, I, you know, the barn, although it is a human rights violation and absolutely against the law, you realize it would have a 100% success rate, right? Lock you in my barn, feed you the food as much as you want to eat now, but it's, I pick the food. You don't pick the food. We would check labs every three months just to make sure everything's okay. You'd have wonderfully pure water to drink, wonderfully pure air to breathe, and wonderfully pure food to eat. Can you imagine in three months how your health would turn around? But see, there's a there's a thing here. You you can bypass the barn part. You can actually do this at your house. <clears throat> now, granted, if you do it at your house, you might slip up a time or two. You might have some uh, temptation. You might have a moment of weakness. You might slip up. But that's not a big deal in the big picture. Okay, if you mess up and eat some ding dongs, pretend it never happened. Get right back on a proper human diet. Paul Bader, and act like that, that didn't even happen. Forgive yourself immediately. That's what happens for so many people. They screw up, eat something stupid, and then they're mad at themselves. They're beating themselves up with that, that inner voice. You know that inner voice. Freaking idiot. So stupid. Can't believe you're such a freaking loser. Can't do anything right. You ever heard that voice in your head? Yeah, that's not your friend. Okay? You need to work on getting that voice out of your head. But don't give in to that voice. Don't listen to that. If you mess up on a proper human diet, forgive yourself, look in the mirror, I'm sorry, and get right back on it. Don't let your guilt and your anger sidetrack you. All right. Here, oh, here's uh, for my, my friends at the Carnivore Cure. So glad you're in the Healing Humanity movie. Do I need to worry about being in ketosis on carnivore to lose weight? I was... Uh, I was 71 pounds down. Oh, you were 715 pounds. Now down to 478 now, but I'm stalled a bit. So you need to take a, a daily dose of vitamin P, right? Carnivore is fine. Now, the way you can get into deeper ketosis while on carnivore is to bump up your fat to protein ratio. And I'd prefer you do this by adding fat, not lowering protein. And your first thought, I know, because you've had problems with your weight, is going to be like, wait, so you're telling me to eat more food? Yes, I am. Yes. Bump up the fat. Keep your protein the same. You will you will unstick your stall. Okay, you're doing great. You've literally lost more weight than most people weigh. Wow, look at that. Oh, down over 200 pounds and, and big change. Wonderful, wonderful. Stephanie, Dr. Barry, my nephew Bray had a CAT scan and they found a three millimeter hypo enhancing focus in the right cella. I told my nephew maybe proper human diet would help him. It's definitely not going to hurt him, Stephanie. Uh, this is the this report that you're reading off to me. It narrows down what this is, but it doesn't tell us exactly what it is. It could still be several different things. Uh, and so keep praying and keep slowly converting your nephew over to a proper human diet. Because even if this turns out to be nothing, completely benign, it goes away. Does your nephew still deserve all the benefits that come from eating a proper human diet? Yeah. Keep us up to date on what happened, Stephanie. Natasha Love, been keto for years and strict carnivore for a year and a half. Lost over 100 pounds, but still had at least 100 to go. Weight loss stall for months at a time. 
Uh, could that be due to perimenopause? I do take vitamin P. Good. So Natasha knows about vitamin P and what brand I recommend for all you guys who are like, wait, what? Vitamin P? It's patience. Sometimes you have to give your body grace and patience. So uh, you lost over 100, still got 100 to go, and you're stalling for months at a time. Uh, there's multiple things you can do, Natasha. The first thing I recommend that you do, Natasha, and anybody, any of you guys who your weight loss is stalled for over three months, I've got a video on my YouTube channel called 13 Reasons Why Your Weight Loss Has Stalled. There's 13 different reasons in that video, some of which you will need your doctor's help to investigate, okay? Some of which you can investigate yourself at home. But that's why I made that video is because if I tried to tell you all 13 reasons, I would forget two or three, Natasha. So after this is over, go watch the 13 reasons why your weight loss stalled and investigate each one thoroughly. It could absolutely be menopause. Have you had your sex hormones checked? It could be undiagnosed hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It could be an undiagnosed adrenal issue. It could be any number of things, Natasha. It could be some of the prescription medications you're taking. It could be some of the over-the-counter medications you're taking. Any of those things can, can stall your weight loss. Keep taking daily dose of vitamin P. Watch the 13 reasons why your weight loss stalled and check back with me if you have more questions. Dark Buddhist. Hello, if my liver blood work shows normal ranges now, does it mean fatty liver has fully reversed? Almost certainly. Dark Buddhist, you would need a scan of some sort to, uh, to confirm that. But almost certainly, if you've got very much fat in your liver at all, your AST, your ALT, or your GGT are going to be elevated. Uh, keto Carnival reversed my awful type 2 diabetes. Oh, my God, look at this, guys. Dark Buddhist had an A1C of 13. That's about as bad as it can get. I've seen a little higher, not much. Now it's 5.4. Off, off meds, no meds, no injections, no Ozempic, just a proper human diet. And fatty liver's gone too, or his, his liver enzymes would still be elevated. Huzzah, huzzah. And now I need you to pay me back, Dark Buddhist. You know how you're going to do that? by teaching your friends and family how to do the exact same thing that you did. You don't need an MD or a PhD to teach people how to eat real food and how to avoid real junk food shit. That's common sense. And now that you've figured it out and you've got the proof in your own life, dark Buddhist, you can start, you can start helping other people. Huzzah. Ah, oh, Perlita. Hey, Dr. Barry, follow up from yesterday. Uh, per both docs, notes state diabetes mellitus due to hyperlipidemia. So we, listen to this, guys. Uh, Perlita went to the doctor and she's completely reversed her type 2 diabetes. She now has an A1C of 5.6. Her doctor said, no, you still have diabetes because your, your LDL cholesterol is high. Did the American Diabetes Association change the criteria? I, I didn't get the memo. That so that's actually a note on your on your portal, Perlita. CBC and CMP perfect within normal range. Cardio doc also states that I should be on Repatha. Yeah, they definitely want you on Repatha because your LDL cholesterol is high. Uh, BP is 110 over 65. Look at that beautiful blood pressure. So Perlita's got a normal A1C, normal fasting insulin, normal triglycerides, normal HDL, and Beautiful blood pressure, but they think that her high high LDL cholesterol is, is going to kill her. If any of you guys are confused by what I just said, I've got a video on YouTube called How Not to Die of a Heart Attack, where I actually break down the risks from each having each condition. What's more dangerous, being obese or having type 2 diabetes? Do you know? I tell you in that video. What's what's more dangerous, having high blood pressure? or having high LDL cholesterol. Are you sure you know? The video is called How Not to Die of a Heart Attack. And I've got the links to the research in the show notes. So if you're like, there's no way that's right, the research is right there. Perlita, honey, you do not have type 2 diabetes anymore. You have reversed it. Now, what your doctor is trying to say is, oh, you've put it in temporary remission. 
you still need to take Rapatha. I think Rapatha and Prowuant are complete and utter. They're worse than junk. Junk is just a waste of money. They they are things that could potentially harm your health and also cost you money in the process. They lower your LDL cholesterol to sub therapeutic. I'm I'm talking about sub physiological levels. They get it down to places where a normal person's LDL net cholesterol never goes, like 20 or 30. Mm-mm, that will not end well. Trust me, five or 10 years from now, there's going to be a huge class action lawsuit. I, so you do what you want. Talk to your doctor. I would never take Rapatha or Prowuant, ever. Shadow, three months in, plenty of salt, eating two pounds, if not more, of meat a day with eggs. Stopped caffeine three months ago, still tired. Is that normal in early carnivore? Uh, I'm Even though you're eating two pounds, if not more, of meat, I'm afraid you're not eating until you're full, Shadow. Uh, many of us have been gluttons for many years, and we've been eating lots of food. So even though you're like, Jesus, two pounds of meat, that's got to be enough. No, eat until you're comfortably stuck. Eat until you cannot eat another bite. Also, are you sleeping well? If you're not sleeping well, if your sleep hygiene is not uh, sorted, watch my videos on my YouTube channel about how to get better sleep. The way you find those videos is to go to YouTube and click on the little search bar and type in Dr. Barry sleep. And you'll find every video I've made about sleep or that mentions sleep. Because if you're not sleeping well, then you're going to be tired. There's nothing about a carnivore diet that's going to make you tired. Brian, A1C is six, so you're currently pre-diabetic. Uh, glycated albumin, 13.3, fasting insulin, 3.9. Yeah, so you've got your glycated albumin. Uh, it's just a little bit higher than I would like. Anything under 15 is normal, but I'd like for it to be a little, a little lower than 13. Fasting insulin, 3.9, which is not bad at all. Uh, okay, Brian, I think you, you, I think you're in the private group. We talked about you earlier. So even though you're able to see six, your glycated albumin was 13.3, which is normal. And I wouldn't mind if it were a little lower, but that's within normal limits. So the A1C is, is a, is a, a red herring. It's basically caused because your red blood cells are living longer on such a nutrient dense diet. Oh, Randy. Oh no. Help, I'm on a liquid diet for the foreseeable future. This sucks. <clears throat> Keep in mind that every single thing on a keto diet, a ketovore diet, or a carnivore diet, you can put into a mag magic bullet or a, a ninja, a blender, a KitchenAid. Okay? Everything. You can, uh, from scrambled eggs to sardines, and you can suck it through a straw. Maybe a little unusual tasting because typically when we suck things through a straw, we expect a sweet taste. There's no law that says it's got to be sweet if you suck it through a straw. Do you know that? There's no rule. You can suck anything through a straw. And who can I go to discuss my imminent cholesterol results? I just know my new doc is going to say it's too high. Um, if you're in our private group, uh, and we, you can discuss it with the coaches or with me on one of the lives. I'm going to be live inside the private group at 6 p.m. Central today. So if any of you guys are watching this and you want to you want to have access to me, uh, where there's 200 people asking questions instead of 2,000, join the group. There's a link down in the show notes. And then, Ann, we can discuss that at length. You can even put your lab work results in and stuff. The Happy Housewife. Hey, Dr. Barry, I'm currently pregnant with baby number two. This is my first carnivore pregnancy. Any ideas how it will affect breast milk? It's going to make the most nutrient-dense breast milk that, that this baby could possibly have, okay? Uh, I hope you're eating a little seafood. I hope you're eating some sardines, some cod liver, along with your beef, uh, beef, bacon, butter, and eggs. You can eat any meat, anything that creeps, crawls, swims, flies, runs, gallops, hops, jumps, digs, burrows, is on a carnivore diet, okay? Uh, this is the only thing I'm nervous about. Yeah, and so look up what your breast milk is made of. Look up what, and so it's full of vitamins and minerals and amino acids and fatty acids. 
many different proteins, many different fatty acids. And it does have some sugar in it in the form of lactose and in other uh, long sugar chains. Your liver is going to make the sugar through a process called gluconeogenesis. Okay, As long as you're eating enough food, and so you're never going to portion control while you're pregnant, while you're breastfeeding, while you're trying to get pregnant, never portion control. Eat until you're comfortably stuffed. Okay. Eat plenty of fat, plenty of protein. There's no need for carbs. If you want to have some carbs occasionally, that's also perfectly fine. Happy housewife, you're pregnant, honey. Every now and then it's fine to give into a craving, but just don't do it every day. And you're going to make plenty of breast milk. Make sure you're getting plenty of salt, electrolytes, and drinking water when you're thirsty. And you'll make all the breast milk that baby needs. You could actually make enough breast milk for three babies, if you just wanted to. Keep in mind, women have triplets and they still, they just have two boobs, but somehow the triplets uh, don't starve to death. Okay, the Nisha talks about breastfeeding a lot on her channel. If you want more of that sort of thing, she's a certified breastfeeding consultant. Uh, there are many, many ways that you can maximize your breast milk production and eating lots of animal fat and animal protein. That's one of the, the bedrock principles of making good breast milk. The matrix and roads show doc. I'm going, I'm going in on carnivore coming from a low carb background. I'm weight training five days per week and getting in 17,000 steps per day with 30 minutes of fasted cardio every morning on my Nordic track. Feeling good. Excellent. 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 You're setting a great example for everybody who knows you personally. Looking better and better, feeling better and better, eating a proper human diet. What do you think, guys? Is that how we're going to change the world? I feel like it might be uh, fool's gold to be expecting the people in authority to fix the world. Do you think that? Do you feel that way? Like, I feel like if we're just going to sit around and wait for the powers that be to fix everything, I think we all need to start doing what Matrix and Rhodes is doing in all aspects of our life. Fix it yourself. If you don't know how to fix it yourself, you've got this thing, okay? Now, you've heard of the Library of Alexandria. You heard of that? Thousands and thousands of books and scrolls. Burned down. We're so sad all that knowledge was lost. Do you realize you've got a hundred libraries of Alexandria right here? If you don't know how to do something, look at my beautiful wife. Hmm. Yeah. If you don't know how to do something today, I can forgive you for that. But if you still don't know how to do it tomorrow, that's your fault. You should have looked it, looked it up. Okay. A hundred, if not a thousand, libraries of Alexandria at your fingertips. You can literally lay in the bed and learn how to do anything you want to do in this world. Let's not make excuses. Let's make solutions. Danica, I was recently diagnosed with an emerging cataract in my left eye. Have you heard of anyone reversing this uh, via carnivore? I, actually, I think I have a YouTube video about cataracts. I can't remember. I've either got the show notes to make it or I have made it. I've made a lot of videos. But um, cataracts absolutely uh, form quicker and or are thicker and more opaque. The higher your fasting insulin is and the higher your levels of chronic, uh, chronic inappropriate inflammation are. Okay. Now, there are other things involved. But those two things seem to be necessary for somebody to develop severe cataracts. And so uh, you absolutely need to be eating either real whole food, one ingredient, keto or ketovore or carnivore. Okay. Watch my videos about eye health. Apply that. Um, Dr. Lisa Wiedemann is an optometrist. She's a carnivore. She, I guarantee you, if you reached out to her on Instagram, she would answer you. Uh, there's, there's several other eye docs in this space 
Uh, Dr. Kenobi is, I think, an ophthalmologist. He would probably be happy to answer any questions you have, Danica. And none of us can make you any promises or make you any guarantees. All we can do is say, it damn sure ain't going to hurt, and it's probably going to help. One crafty gal. I haven't been able to work out for two weeks due to the flu bronchitis. Would I lose a lot of muscle in that time frame? Not a lot, but you're going to lose a, a, a percentage. Yes. If you've laid around on the couch and in bed for two weeks, especially depending on your age, you've lost a chunk of muscle. Yeah, and it'll take a while to get that back. Uh, when I see patients in the clinic and uh, it's an older patient and they have a bad case of the flu or they have pneumonia and they're in bed for a week or two, when they get out of bed, they're like, dude, I can barely go up the stairs. I'm like, yeah, I know. Just give it time. You've lost a bunch of muscle. It's just going to take time to build it back up. And the older you are, the longer it takes. And so also the older you are, the less you want to try to lay around on the couch, on the sofa, in the recliner, in the bed. Because anytime you're lying still like that, your body's like, we don't need all this muscle. Go ahead and go ahead and catabolize some of that muscle. We don't need all that. We're not even using it. The signal to your body to keep your muscle and to build more muscle is to use your muscles. That's the signal. Randy, blended meats, broth, eggs, and tallow. Any advice? Keep doing that. That's my advice, Randy. Uh, Carrie Franklin, 30 months on carnivore, lost 60 pounds and kept it off. Been doing an ice plunge uh, every day since November of 2023. My CRP was 6.4, now 0.3 to 0.5. I feel better than I did 30 years ago. I sleep seven to nine hours each night, and I owe it to Dr. Barry. Thank you. No, Carrie Franklin. You don't owe it to me. You owe it to yourself. You're, I gave you the information, and now you have implemented it and stuck to it. And when you had temporary backslides, you took a dose of vitamin P and stuck with it. And now here you are. Look what you've done. Look what you've done, Carrie. Are you proud? You should be. And now I need you to pay me back by teaching every friend and family member you have who's, who's ready to learn about this. Teach them how to do it. Huzzah. Jesse and Megan. Hello, Dr. Barry. I have been eating beef, red and salt, water. That's it for th the last three months. I gained 20 pounds. This must be Megan. I feel better mentally. My question is, since October, I've had strep times two and earache times one and now allergy throat. Uh, it, it, it happens for some women when they start carnivore that they will gain some weight initially. And very often it's because you've been basically semi-starving yourself for decades, uh, not eating until you're full. And then with the liberty on carnivore to eat to your comfortably stuff, you gain a little weight because your body's like, finally, some real nutrition. Uh, this happened to my good friend, Kelly Hogan, who I'm going to uh, be on her channel here in a, in a few weeks. I'm excited about that. Then the weight, it, it plateaued, it stopped, and then it started coming off again. Now she's, you should see her now. OMG. Thank you, Polly. <clears throat> Sama, any insight on using low-dose naltrexone to treat my friend's six-month-long COVID neurological symptoms have refused to go away? Low-dose naltrexone might help. I haven't read any research showing that it will but it might. I've seen it help some other things that I didn't think it would help. And it turns out, it seems like it helps a little. Um, give it a try. It's not going to hurt anything for sure. Hope your friend's also eating a proper human diet and, and living a proper human life, getting plenty of sleep, getting out in the morning sun, walking around on the dirt barefooted. Orthodox Methodist, the people's champion. Thanks for everything you do. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Amy, husband is on Simbacort and Spiriva for asthma. It is causing sinusitis, severe nasal swelling. Neither of us are getting sleep at night. Ketivore for two weeks. Any medication you suggest until it helps. Uh, so these two medications for asthma can have nasal side effects. That's true. 
Uh, he's only been on ketovore for two weeks, so it may be not long enough to calm down the inflammation. But I would I would entertain a third option, Amy. It could be that he's got a sinus infection. He may need to go to the doc and get imaged and see if he's got a, a sinus polyp, which these medications also increase the risk of, uh, or a sinus infection, maybe a fungal infection. These also increase the risk of that as well. And at some point, he's going to be able to get off one, if not both of those. Uh, but you got to get this sinus thing investigated. Go see ear, nose, and throat and say, what the heck, man? What do we need to do here? A bony, Dr. Berry, pain and inflammation, liver disease symptoms have decreased significantly, and wife and I have only been carnivore since January 1st. Yep. How many of you guys are brand new to listen to me? And when you hear something like this, your spidey sense, you're just like, what? That can't be true. When I first started hearing these stories, years ago, I was like, there's no way a diet does that. I'm just recommending keto and carnivore for weight loss. There's no way a diet does this. But then I kept hearing it and kept hearing it and kept hearing it over and over. Now, tens of thousands of people have told me I started eating this way and the following things happened and continue to happen. So I'm a believer now. All of you guys, Nisha and I, says, we say this very often, but you're welcome to share your scale victory or non-scale victory in the comments right now because people go through these comments and they read them, and they may have a story just like you used to have before you fixed it, and you sharing your story in these comments. They're scrolling through, and they see it, and they're like, oh, oh well, that sounds like me. And then what? What the? Huh. I'm going to try a proper human diet. Literally, you could save someone's life if they read your comment. Just a thought. Jim, 56-year-old female, three months keto, A1C 4.9, HDL 50, triglycerides 138. Many health improvements. Doctor pushing a statin. Cholesterol is greater than 300. Also, uh, hemoglobin hematocrit went high. Can keto cause... For some very few people, they will their hemoglobin and hematocrit will elevate a little bit. You can fix this immediately by giving blood. Next time Red Cross comes, just give blood. Do that two or three, four times a year. It'll keep your hemoglobin and hematocrit right where they need to be. You'll be helping hundreds of people and also benefiting from eating a proper human diet. Look at that A1C, 4.9. Mm, 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 mm. A1C so good, it'll make you smack your mama. Herbal Warrior, once I get to my ideal weight on keto, can I eat uh, one cheat meal a week? Anybody hear any bargaining going on? Like one piece of bread type thing. Bread and pasta addict here. So far, I've lost five pounds. Uh, five days on keto. So you've been on keto five days, and you're already planning your cheat when you hit your... <laughs> Hey, I hear you, Herbal Warrior. Brother, I hear you, okay? I used to be the same way. This is carbohydrate addiction talking, okay? This is this is the part of the, the equation where you're making deals and you're negotiating. Got to get, I got to get healthy, but maybe I can have a cheat meal once a week. Sure, promise yourself that now, but what's going to happen is if you stick to this way of eating strictly enough for long enough, you're not going to miss the bread. Literally, if you, you, I don't even know what you have to pay me. If somebody came to my house and made real, real sourdough bread from the, you know, the, the friend bread where that's been passed down for 45 years. And it was the best sourdough bread in the world. Won the, won the gold medal worldwide. I could care less. I don't even, if, I mean, if, if Nisha said, I'm going to divorce you if you don't eat this bread, I would eat the bread. But you could literally offer me a thousand bucks, eat this bread. I'd be like, it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. Now, real homemade sourdough bread is much less bad than any bread you can buy in the store. It's going to be a little less inflammatory, less inflammatory. I did not say not inflammatory. 
it's still full of exactly the same amount of carbohydrates and sugars. But since you actually fermented it and made it properly, it's going to be a little less inflammatory. I still wouldn't touch it. It's not worth it. I love meat. I love eggs. And I love how I feel when I'm eating meat and eggs. Why would I? I don't miss it anymore. Now, when I first started keto years ago, I'd be like, yeah, every Friday night, I'm about to bust that sourdough bread. Yes, but I'm going to be good all week. I'll, I'll be making that negotiation, that deal. But I don't do that anymore. Most carnivores, after enough months doing this, they don't they don't have to make deals like that. But if that's the deal you need to make right now, Herbal Warrior, yes, it's fine. Jennifer, tribe member, carnivore, uh, for a year and a half, down 75 pounds. Cholesterol just went to crap. High triglycerides, low HDL, and TSH shot up out of the blue. A1C up from 4.5 to 5.1. This sounds like an undiagnosed thyroid condition. Sound like sounds like you have a new thyroid condition. It can it can do every single thing you just told me about. You got to get your thyroid sorted. Yeah, I'm sure you've already asked for the full thyroid panel. Uh, you got to get the results and you got to act on that and get the thyroid issue under control. All right, let's see what's going on. Ah, this is a great question. Cone man, why do carbs cause inflammation? So it's not just the carbs that cause the inflammation, okay? For, for the vast majority of people, it's the proteins in the plants. It's the proteins uh, in the fungus, in the mushrooms. It's the oxalates, the lectins, the phytates, the saponifants, the phytoestrogens. I could just go on and on and on naming all of the plant defense chemicals that can cause inflammation. If if eggs are, if the chickens are raised completely improperly and fed a shitty diet, then the whites of, of supermarket eggs can sometimes be inflammatory. And that's because of the proteins. It's got improper proteins in it. When you were a four-year-old baby, you could drink milk and it was good for you and it was fine. Now, if you drink milk, the caseins and the ways are no longer proper for you. You're an adult mammal now. You don't. You shouldn't be drinking milk. It's going to cause some degree of inflammation, more so in some people, less so in others, but non inflammation nonetheless. And this also includes raw milk. Raw milk, if properly handled from a reputable source, is much less bad than supermarket milk, than homogenized pasteurized milk. It is significantly less bad, but less bad does not equal good for an adult. Sorry. All right, I'm looking for a question, you guys. Can the carnivore diet, Jason asks, help the cardiac calcium score, the coronary artery calcium score? My CCS is relatively low, 30. However, I have been on warfarin for 26 years and will be on it for the rest of my life. So first of all, you can eat carnivore, even if you're taking warfarin, okay, or Coumadin. It's not going to affect that at all. Secondly, uh, the, the warfarin Coumadin, that's not why you're – coronary artery calcium scores 30. Okay. There that affects clotting, not calcification. Thirdly, you want to be eating as low carb as you possibly can, and carnivore is the lowest carb diet out there. Hope that helps, Jason. Jennifer. Sue. Weirdness report. 72 year old had a crooked, had crooked fingers like my mom. Uh, past 17 months on Ketobor, my fingers are straighter now. Also, Herberton's nodes almost gone. Anybody spotty sense going, what? Yeah, especially for the, the inflammatory arthritis. Okay, now just osteoarthritis is going to improve. 
But a lot of people have been diagnosed with osteoarthritis, but what they really have is an inflammatory arthritis. And the inflammation is being caused by something in their diet. Something they're eating or drinking is causing the chronic inflammation in their joints. And after a while, you start to develop Heberden's nodes. You start Your joints start to get crooked. You start to just have chronic, big, swelling, swollen red knuckles. And then when you fix your diet, all of a sudden, all those tissues don't want to be inflamed. So they want to be normal. They want to be healthy. Now that you remove the slow poison that was causing that, all of a sudden, they're like, hey, we can heal them. Yeah. Yeah, we've had so many people with psoriatic arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and, and many other autoimmune arthritis say, man, when I... When I went on real whole food keto, can't be keto with keto cookies, cakes, and pies and other bullshit. It's got to be real meat and veg keto. Uh, then even more so on ketovore, we hear it even more often. And then most often we hear it on carnivore. My chronic inflammatory arthritis, my psoriatic arthritis, my rheumatoid arthritis, even my osteoarthritis, it's significantly better, like noticeably better. Yeah, we hear this all the time. Huzzah. So now teach your friends how to do it because they want to know. Thank you, John. Uh, Matuine is OMAD one meal a day. Any more beneficial versus fasting for 48 to 72 hours? I don't think there's much difference. Um, so when you do OMAD one meal a day, you're fasting for basically 23, 22, 23 hours a day. And so if you just skip that one meal and don't eat until the next day, that's a 48-hour fast. But I think nobody should try to start this way of eating with a 48- or 72-hour fast. I think you should get your food proper first. First, eat real food. Eat a proper human diet. Get that under your belt. Get that sorted. And if any of you guys are like, yeah, but what is a proper human diet? I don't know what that is. Down in the show notes, you can get a copy of my 25-page Proper Human Diet Guidebook, and you can get it for the low, low price of zero dollars. Yeah. 25 pages of what is a proper human diet explained, and there's no upsell at the end. Okay? It's just explaining the proper human diet. There's a link down in the show notes that will help you out. Uh, so once you've been on keto, ketovore, carnivore for a month or two, then it's going to be easy to fast. Most people just stop eating breakfast. They're like, I'm not hungry. I'm not going to eat. And then once you do, you've done that, then you're eating one meal a day. And then you're like, you know, I'm not going to eat. I'm going to do a 48 hour fast. And it ain't nearly as hard as you thought it was going to be. Yeah. Some people go longer. I don't think it's necessary, but I also don't think it's dangerous or harmful to fast for longer than 48 hours. John says, what does it mean to be fat adapted and how long does it take to get there on carnivore? So I've got a video I made on my YouTube channel years ago called How to Know If You're Fat Adapted. And you can look that up and watch it. And I still agree with everything in that video or I would have taken it down. Uh, but back then I was just talking about carnivore, uh, keto, but you can absolutely become fat adapted on ketovore or carnivore or even the lion diet if you're eating enough fat. And what this means is, is that your body, it's your body can immediately switch over to burn sugar. Okay. And some, some authorities, some PhDs and MDs think that that's actually a signal that sugar, too much sugar in the bloodstream is probably very, very dangerous. And so your body wants to burn it up as, as immediately as possible, but it can take some people a few days, a few weeks, even a few months to become fully fat adapted so that the, they can burn fat just as easily as they can burn sugar. And uh, like I said, some people, just a few days, they're fat adapted. And then it, other people, it takes three months. So there's a spectrum, just like everything else in human biology. And it's, it's really hard for me to know without talking to you for 30 minutes where you're going to fall on that. So somewhere between three days and three months. John, hope that helps. Will... 47-year-old male here with swollen ankles and feet. Will carnivore help? 
hundred percent will. First thing you need to do is go see your doctor will because the three most common causes of swollen ankles are heart failure, kidney failure, and liver failure. We need to make sure you don't have any of those. If you do have those, we need to know. Your doctor needs to know so we can get you on some temporary medication to, to stabilize you as you're adopting a proper human diet. And then we can talk about reassessing the medications later on. Okay, first, first thing, go see your doctor, figure out why you've got these. Could be an over-the-counter medication, could be too much alcohol, could be a prescription medication, could be too many carbs for too long, it's caused hyperinsulinemia, and that's what's making you swell. Or it could be heart failure, kidney failure, or liver failure. Got to find out which, or which combination. Grace, keto carnivore for fertility and autoimmune, doing an extended water fast today on day three, feeling pretty good. So Grace hasn't eaten in three days, guys. You saw the recent news article, Grace, where the, the Harvard students, they went on a hunger strike for the people in Gaza, Hamas. And they, they, they went on a hunger strike. And they, they didn't eat for 12 hours. I'm not. I'm not kidding you. That was literally the, the Harvard newspaper, student newspaper posted that proud, like proudly. Like these, these poor children didn't eat for 12 hours. They're on a hunger strike. I'm like, dude, I fast for 12 hours every day before breakfast. Actually, more than that. Usually 20 hours. But these, these poor college kids really thought they should have been wonder because they didn't eat for 12 hours. Grace hasn't eaten in three days, and she's still able to type this YouTube message. Feeling pretty good. We'll uh, prescribe Chinese fertility herbs, 10 capsules a day, kick me out of autophagy or keto. Probably not, <coughs> Grace, but I, if I were you, before I take the Chinese fertility herbs, I would reach out to a fertility specialist because I'm not a fertility specialist and I'm also not a specialist in Chinese herbs. But I do know that there are some herbs that can completely F up your ability to get pregnant. And I'm sure you went to a reputable practitioner, but I'd love it if you would talk to a fertility specialist like Dr. Robert Kiltz, K-I-L-T-Z, and just run these fertility herbs by him or somebody like him before you take them, because I know that eating a high fat carnivore diet, high fat ketovore, high fat carnivore is going to increase your odds of getting pregnant and also help your autoimmune conditions. But I don't know anything about Chinese herbs, so I can't I can't help you with that. That makes me a little nervous. Not saying it's bad, just saying I don't know. Jill, hey from Canada, 54 year old. Five foot two, 210 pounds. I have vestibular neuritis on Paxil for 25 years in menopause. Yikes, where to start? So where to start? Number one, remove all sugar from your diet, both added sugar and naturally occurring sugar. Step two, remove all grains from your diet. Wheat, rice, oats, and corn are the first ones to go, then all the rest. Number three, don't eat any vegetable seed oils, no soybean, canola, sunflower, safflower, peanut oil, none of that. Use animal fat to cook in. Number four, cover at least half of your plate each meal with fatty red meat and eggs with the yolk. If you want to cover the entire plate with fatty red meat and eggs with the yolk, that is fine. But if you just want half your diet to be fatty red meat, eggs with yolk, and the other half low-carb veg, that's fine. That's keto. And then continue. Keep doing that over and over and over. Make sure you're getting good sleep. Make sure you're at least going for a walk every day, if not more strenuous activity. Get out in the morning sun, walk barefoot in the grass, live a proper human life. But more importantly, eat a proper human diet. That's step one, okay? You're probably going to notice the vestibular neuritis and the 210 pounds while being five foot two. Or they're both going to start immediately to improve. And now the Paxil, I don't know what dose you're on, but I do know you've been on it for 25 years. 
it's going to take you months to slowly wean that down. I would wait till I've been strict high fat ketivore, high fat carnivore for three months. And then I would try to decrease the Paxil down one dose with the help of your doctor, of course. Uh, so whatever dose you're on now, let's go down 25% and then wait a month or two. Then go down 25 more percent, wait a month or two. And then after that, you may have to wean it down in even smaller increments because getting off the SSRIs and the SNRIs is a B Ouch. Okay. It is not easy. After you've taken it for this long, your brain has literally changed. And it's going to take a while for it to change back. All right, last question, guys. And then I'm going to go get ready for the live coming up in our private group. Jonathan, my wife, 37, has gastroparesis. Can she do carnivore? I'm 11 months on carnivore, lost 47 pounds. Yes, she can, Jonathan. She may have to puree the meat and eggs for a while. Uh, but most people, even with severe end-stage gastroparesis, they notice that the more they eat carnivore, the less severe the gastroparesis gets. So absolutely, yes, she will benefit from that. Now, if any of you guys have questions that I didn't get to, in 30 minutes, I'm going to be live inside of our private group. Five bucks a month. That's what it costs. I know that's what you're wanting to know. Five bucks a month, and you'll be able to be part of this live coming up at 6 p.m. Central. And I do that live every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central. And instead of 2,400 people, almost 2,500, there will be 250, something like that, asking questions. So I can answer questions more completely, more thoroughly. If you need questions answered, join the group. We also have 10 coaches in there who oftentimes they've, they've heard your question 20 times and they're like, oh, yeah, I can help you with that. Uh, if they can't help you, they'll bump you up to me. That's how it works, okay? P whatever problems people can fix, they fix, just like I kind of advise you guys. If you can fix it, fix it. If you can't fix it, bump it up the line. And that's what our coaches do. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for sharing this video with somebody who might need it. That helps a lot.